Right, okay. Looks like it started. I will go ahead and begin sharing my screen. Thank you for that. Well, thank you for having me here. It's nice to uh, always be with other project managers and uh, people looking into improvements wherever you're at and in whatever your offices are at. Um, my name again is Isaac Weininger and I'm with the Chief Operations Office with uh, ODHS and have been working here with them uh, the last about three years. So, uh, and before that, um, you got some of that in the introduction. So, um, right now, this presentation will be sent out afterwards. Um, but the next page, this just kind of lays out what we'll be going over today. Uh, it's broken up into four different areas with the executive summary, some of the lean uh, analyst approach, and also the implementation and sustainability. And um, for us with the COO right now, we're looking at, uh, we receive projects from all areas of ODHS and even some of the shared shared and central services. And so right now we receive those mainly through um, our smart sheets that we've sent up, set up, and uh, we have a request form where people are able to submit those requests and I'll get into that a little bit more. And but we're looking at also with the CEO looking at some more uh, proactive ways to look into our work and mainly focus in on the COO groups that report directly to the uh, director and uh, looking at ways to be proactive with them and uh, really get ahead of a lot of those issues or barriers that begin to grow and uh, seeing if there's ways that we can work with them um, every six months or so and look at their metrics and what's going on and get any of those early early indications that we can uh, work with them and look at any processes or where things are getting held up and so that's kind of what we're looking forward to over the, this next year to being a little more proactive approach instead of waiting for people to um, request some of that work after the problem has grown um, into a larger problem. So we'll see, that will be kind of an interesting new approach for us. So looking forward to that. Um, here we'll look into the lean analysis approach and mainly looking in again, this is mainly looking at project improvement um, for the lean approach. And um, so here what we do for the CEO, we receive all of our project requests through Smartsheets and that's usually comes through a variety of ways of either our director or um, deputy director in different meetings or conversations and uh, something's coming up and then um, they ask them to go ahead and submit those requests through our process and then we meet every couple weeks and review those projects and uh, make sure that they're in alignment with it everything that's going on with the agency and also we try to keep coordinated with the other PMOs um, within like child welfare and self-sufficiency and APD and uh, other groups so that we can be sure that if there's any crossover of those groups that we can either coordinate with them or if it's something that's um, totally just a different groups area, we'll see if they have capacity to take that on. And so we'll kind of go through and look at each of those projects and then evaluate them and then go ahead and assign one of our team members to them as uh, once they get approved. And in here and feel free. Um, so you don't hear me talking the whole time. If you want to um, add any messages in the chat or do any of that along the way, I'll try to keep an eye out for those. But otherwise, at the end, I'll also um, plan on taking questions and going back to any of the sections that you have additional questions or thoughts on. Um, but for us, one of the key important ways to find project success for us is really working with the sponsors and making sure we have the right level of sponsorship on the project of someone um, not too high of level that they're not really involved or engaged with the work, but finding um, 
who's kind of the active sponsor that will be part of that project and be able to keep that momentum moving forward with the project once it gets um, initiated. Um, so these were just some ideas for some of the questions that we use when we're developing the charter. And a, one approach, there's a few different approaches that people use for developing the charter, but one that we uh, tend to lean towards and like is more of a, having a conversational, um, more like an interview type technique with the charter instead of pulling up the charter and then going through box by box and uh, adding it in there information in is more of having open ended conversations with the sponsor and any other key partners in, involved with the project and really um, get into the information about the project. And one of the key things also that we like to try to stop ourselves because probably the same with most of you that we're all problem solvers here and we like to jump to solutions or oh yeah I, we can fix that we'll do that we're, we'll do this and uh one thing that we really try to do is hold ourselves back from jumping to solutions and really stop and uh look at those root causes of the problem and make sure we really understand what that root cause is of the problem and before jumping into a project or starting a project or um project solutions. So we really want to find out a, a lot of that baseline information and how do you know that this is a problem? How long has it been happening? Happening? Do you have any metrics around that? And is this like a one one special instant or um, that just raised to a high level or is this something that's happening like daily or weekly and try to really get to um, the root cause of what that issue is and um, what's being requested within the project. So just going through and having that conversational kind of interview uh, to develop the charter and uh, find out more about the actual project is, I think for us, we found as a good approach and that way it keeps it a little more open-ended in those conversations. And we try to define then the work of the scope and what's in it and then, some of these questions just also help you find the engagement level of the managers. Are they available and uh, going to be ready for this? Or like checking on some of the time, is there any like big constraints coming up for that group or that unit that like they're going to be doing a tr uh, IT transition? So that's going to refocus a lot of their energy and staff time into something else. So then is this the right time to begin this work? Or is there going to be a seasonal uh, flux of new requests or um, issues coming up that's going to take a lot of the team time? And then also just checking in again with the staff readiness. Is this something that they've been wanting and looking forward to? Um, is there resistance? Is there have they put a lot of effort in building the current um, processes? And so there may be some resistance to any change that's going to be happening. And then also looking in those upstream and downstream uh, workflow, um, seeing where their work is coming from, understanding that, and then also where it's going out to their customers um, and really defining a lot of those uh, key points within the process. So a lot of that again is just really to um, some of that, some of the sponsors may not know. And so that's why we, really want to check in with the sponsor, then get those right leaders and team members uh, engaged early in that this kind of project um, development phase and just really get those answers and make sure whatever project we're going to be starting is really going to be addressing whatever the actual root cause is and not really going after um, different things that people think that it may be. and. Um, so we try to have a lot of those conversations um, right off when we're beginning those projects and um, yeah, looking for any current metrics if they um, probably with all of us, the metrics with most groups is one of the biggest struggles of identifying and tracking. Some groups have really great metrics, but it seems like a lot uh, don't really have a lot of data or tracking or know a lot of like their touch time or cycle time or 
any of those other uh, pieces to know what good looks like for their work or what's a target range that every staff member should kind of be moving within for uh, whatever type of work that they're doing. And um, and then we also just look at kind of the internal communication for their team and their health, like to see every how everything is working there and if there's any kind of pitfalls or other issues or things that we should be aware of when we're uh, getting into the project here. Um, but so with our team, we try to again uh, share these ideas across our team and if others have some good experiences or or bad ones like uh, just to um, share as much as possible so that we all continue to learn because I think um, for all of us one of the biggest things is also learning to uh, listen and learning to be flexible are some of the key I think items for successful project management as well. And so we'll get on. So we'll get in, get to know those projects. And again, for us on our team and several that we've worked with, one of the key factors for success is the staff um, down here. Some of our key phrases that we always say and is it's not about the people doing the work, but the process that they're involved in. And the other one is going to be the people doing the work that are going to find the best ways to improve the work. So we really uh, try to keep it focused that we're there to listen and learn from them. Uh, we're not coming in with the ideas of what they should do and what they should change, but we're there to work with the staff and team and gather their information, their ideas, and uh, help make that into a way a plan where they can actually implement it. And so we want to look at all all different levels of staff involved in the processes from the start to finish and making sure that um, all of them are engaged. And again, like we were saying with the team dynamics and management dynamics to understand that. And if there's any resistance to change that we'll be walking into just so that our team can get prepped on kind of how carefully we need to be moving around and uh, talking with the different groups and where some of their struggles might be. And then maybe different tools that we might use to uh, help build some of that um, team, team dynamics within the groups. And we also have a uh, equity tool that we can use for our projects. And this again is just a way to review the tool with the sponsors and teams and make sure that we have all of the right voices and uh, people involved with the project and that we're um, getting all the right perspectives so that we know that whatever the outcome is that we uh, were able to gather all of that feedback and information from all of the right sources involved involved in the work in different ways and the customers. So that's just a little little overview of that initial engagement with the, the staff and processes. So next we're going to get into about um, eight slides here and look going over the lean thinking that a lot of our team has many years of experience with um, and added in here just a definition of lean for those that it may be newer to. Um, I'm probably preaching to the choir here. But uh, definition of lean, a business performance improvement practice that is customer focused. It streamlines and stabilizes work processes while removing waste or ineffective steps. And um, so these are some of the main areas that we'll I'll walk through, um, but we really get into what's valuable to the customer. What does that mean? Uh, Gimba walks is another term that we get into of just going to the place where the work is done and understanding that. And that's a little different these days with many, many things being virtual, but our team has been creative in finding uh, different ways to do that and um, still be engaging with the groups that we work with. Um, then we do the current state mapping, uh, gathering feedback, metrics, uh, relationship analysis, 
uh, gap analysis and reporting out on all of that primary uh, preliminary work that we do for the project. So I'll get into each of these slides here. So um, customer focused again, uh, we have some different tools or activities sometimes we do with groups uh, to help them identify what what the customer really wants. Like the customers don't really care all of our internal processes and steps and all the things we have to click on and do. They just mainly want whatever the product product or paper or approval that they're coming in to uh, get. So we use some different examples. I'm sure you've heard of like the Starbucks example, like where a group comes in and they order Starbucks and then you build out all of the steps that can happen within a dip making a coffee. And then you review that with the team and go, what what did the customer order and what are they getting? Like, are all these other steps of um, how needed to be in there? Are they value? Are they incidental or waste uh, steps within a process? And so we have some different ways to help um, kind of coach and show examples of that before we get into looking at their work. And again, sometimes when you're working with groups, sometimes there's really um, some process owners that are really kind of protective of their work, like maybe they're the only ones who do this piece of the work or there's only one or two. And so there can be a lot of feelings attached to that work. And again, that's why we really try to encourage people to realize we're not there to um, go after them or say their their work is bad or anything, but it's all about the process and looking at the processes and what's most efficient and valuable and helping them be the ones that identify those things. And um, because they're the ones that are going to, again, with the keeping sustainability in mind throughout all of this, that they're the ones that are going to be living and working with this through that whole time and even after we're gone. So it needs to be a real process that they uh, fully embrace and find value in. And um, that's not something that as soon as somebody walks away that they're not going to follow or do anymore, but something that they um, really do find value in. And so then with the customers, back to the Starbucks, um, what does that person want at the end? They just want a great tasting coffee. So they don't care all of these other different steps that have to be done throughout the time even, but you can identify what, what are the value steps that the customer needs to have that at the end. And so sometimes I'm sure within your agencies as well as with ours, we build a lot of um, redundancies and things or extra steps and different trackers and Excel sheets and different things that we end up um, creating much more work than is really truly needed to get to the final outcomes. And so sometimes some groups end up identifying several additional steps and trackers and things that take a lot of time that um, aren't needed anymore because a new system update captures all of those things in a different way. And so people just kept doing it and didn't re realize they should have stopped a year or two ago. And so um, that's what is the best part of some of these um, improvement processes of just the staff motivation behind it all, that it's their process and they really get to relook at everything and evaluate it. Um, so the again, I won't read ex exactly off each slide, but um, you'll have these in your notes to be able to look back on. Uh, but that's really on the customer service side, uh, looking at what customers want, what's going to be value to them, and um, how can we really be sure that we're serving them well, and what does that um, what does good look like? And so getting all of that feedback. And uh, Gimbal Walks, I began to explain a little bit about that. That's just um, if there is an office group that actually has an office anymore, then um, one, one way um, to go really experience the work for the project manager or people on the project is to go in and uh, see the people doing the work at the place where it's done. 
you get a lot more information and feel for how things are flowing through that office and um, how things are set up and where things happen. And um, so, yeah, like this one says, oops, gaining a perspective on the work environment, uh, being able to ask better questions during your mapping uh, process. And sometimes our team members uh, would sit down with them and kind of watch what they do um, and just ask them questions during that process and um, um, go from there. Um, let's see. Oh, and then we kind of use this at the end of the project sometimes of once there is a future state developed, um, they're able to go in and look at those times again and validate how things have changed since the current state mapping. And during that time is also a good time to ask them general questions about uh, the timing of their work and the average time it takes to do things. And um, so you can blend in a lot of additional work when you have that opportunity. Uh, with the current state mappings, again, it's always good when you're going to start the event to really clearly, and we have some tools for different ways of what you need to set up the event, things to do 30 days out, what material you need to have, and some of the communication you need. So we have different tools that have a lot of those um, references and quick reference guides built out to help as um, we're doing these things, just to remember some of those questions to ask. And so the good, the thing here is to l learn to ask where's your stopping point and uh, where's your starting point so that when you get into the event you can be clear in the communication of here's here's where we're starting in this process and here's where we're ending so anything outside of those unless we see that it really does impact largely in one of these processes we'll be putting on a parking lot and writing it down so we want to still capture those ideas and those issues, but here's our main scope of work that we're working on for this current state map. And um, also, I'm sure as you've all experienced of working with different groups, there's easy way to scope creep or get off on what if situations. Well, sometimes this happens and sometimes that happens. And so one of the ways uh, we have conversations around that is to talk about the 80-20 rule and that we really want to focus the mapping on the 80% of the workflow that's happening. Like what is the majority of what happens the majority of the time? And so really focus the main efforts of those mapping events to be on the 80%. Again, we still capture those 20% issues um, on the parking lot or on a different day or just depending on what you're setting up with the group just so you don't miss those because they're still important. But um, those what ifs or once in a lifetime problems that come up and really take the group way off track and um, get into random conversations where you're missing a lot of the um, really key time that you have with the group. So we just talk about that and we kind of help. We have the groups kind of self monitor that we're mapping at the right level of detail and that 80 20 rule because as usually sometimes as outsiders we we don't consider ourselves the expert in any of these processes but more of the facilitator helping them kind of move along um, we help kind of ask them is that something that happens 80 percent of the time or is that just a random once 10 years ago this happened and um, so we try to help have those conversations and listen as much as possible and then uh, help them move on if we want to document it in a parking lot. And another kind of uh, approach to helping do this, we really like to have interactive times when we're doing things. So we like to, um, the old style of actually putting the brown paper rolls, the about three foot wide ones along the whole wall and using sticky notes, um, sometimes with different colors that may have different meanings depending how you're setting things up. But we try to keep it more interactive where the staff are going up and putting the notes on and using the processes 
and um, it's then again you're really empowering the staff to build out the process and um, all of the steps and having them engaged in the process so it's not like sitting back in their chairs on their phones and that's another thing of just the setup of the room we try to only have people who are really going to be interactive with the process there in the event we don't want like managers sitting in the back doing emails or like staring at their staff and all of these things so it, we'd rather have uh, man managers that are either fully engaged or not there. <laughs> they can come and set the stage and help their staff feel free to say anything that they want. And then maybe the manager um, go ahead and leave and let the staff kind of build things out. Or if the staff manager is really engaged and isn't going to be like a barrier, like if they've been blocking some of the ideas or the brainstorming that staff have had we really want to uh, allow the staff to have a full opportunity to share any and all of their ideas of what any of those barriers and issues have been and so we, we try to gain that type of perspective before the actual event just so we know kind of how the best way to make the staff feel successful and be able to speak fully about any of the issues that are going to be coming up. Um, and then during the mapping, we um, usually decision points are the diamonds and uh, there's different ways you can color uh, different. Different areas of maps if they're a starting point, end point or decision and then. But anyways, those are all in the mapping details, but during that also. Um, it can be done where you start gathering some average uh, touch times or cycle times or wait times on different things. And so some will have a large range just depending on sometimes we send it to a vendor and vendors have up to 15 days to respond. And but at least knowing that that's a 15 day window, you can document it and say it can be one day to 15 days depending on if the vendor is staying really on track or using the full length of time. But any of those will help give you a full scale of the whole process. And one of the kind of key things, outcomes of the mapping events as well that we try to always do is hopefully there's a lot more mutual respect of the team members that have gone through the process all the way from support staff to people who close off uh, different areas of the work that nobody really knew what they did by having it all mapped out. Uh, it helps people really understand and value each other a lot more, hopefully, um, where they go, oh, now I see that if I didn't click this box or do this thing that it causes you all of this extra wait time that where you have to reach back out and follow up with me or do all these things and uh, different things like that. And so um, and that's one of I think the great outcomes is just that team building and team understanding of the full process and why why is this piece in here and why it's a value add piece instead of a wasteful piece or just a waste of time. I didn't know that we had to click this and that it did this for you. Um, so those are some of the nice kind of aha moments and uh, that can come through mappings. And sometimes even for managers that um, we kind of joke with managers that um, that a lot of them may not know all of the details of the actual work that um, all the staff have to do. So that's why we really want to hear the staff voice and well, there was a new update and now you have to do it like this. I know um, the manager who used to do it 10 years ago always did it a certain way. And so just kind of capturing all those ideas. And again, we want to really empower the staff. Um, that's one of the things that we have that the old saying of the uh, lead from any chair that we want to make sure all staff feel um, that they can get heard and share their ideas for improvements or any of those things. So I'll move on to the next step here. Also, um, throughout this process, you want to build in a feedback loop. Um, sometimes nowadays with smart sheets, we're able to uh, build up a um, like we're doing with one project right now. Uh, we built out a place where staff can begin sending all of their ideas for um, 
not only issues or barriers, but also what's working well within a process, because that's a key thing too, that we want to make sure we're maintaining or keeping what's working well and really promote not everything is a problem, not everything is a big issue, but what it also is working well. So we like to kind of have keep some of that positivity throughout there that this this has been really helpful and this is why it's helpful or if somebody is doing something a certain way and get that highlighted and um, kind of work with the team and say, oh, that, yeah, that would be a really time saver if we did it like that and um, have some of those nice sharing moments with the team members. Um, but yeah, so we we can set up those uh, survey and leave it open throughout the project of where they can click on a link and send ideas anytime throughout the work if they have uh, different ideas or barriers or things that they didn't really want to say in a group setting, but wanted us to know that this is some area of the process we should look into. And so we like to try to gather it in a few different ways, the one on ones with the staff members in group settings where they can kind of all hear some things and agree and kind of get encouraged about it. And also those more like um, over the email where they feel free if they didn't want to say it in person or we try to have a few different ways to gather that feedback so we can get it from multiple sources in multiple ways. Um, and so, yeah, we're gathering those feedback from all the different work areas, um, also about any work environment or things that are going on, because sometimes that can be some of the resistance or things that slow down areas of just some of those uh, relationships between two different groups of people um, that have these passed down um ideas that this group always does it like this and is always cause and that group never does this so trying to uh again identify any of those themes and be able to work through all that and again helping people understand the full uh process i think helps break down some of those past barriers that people have built on their own um yep and i'll skip on to the next one because we're moving through on time pretty fast and this is the most important and probably what we're always seem to be have the most struggles with um, is metrics. And I'm sure there's some groups that have a ton of metrics and that's awesome. We love working with them because then we can build some awesome graphs with them and really validate and make sure all the data is actually telling us what we think it's telling us uh, because a lot of times you go in and you think think you understand the message that the data is telling you, but um, it's you have to look at a few other things to have the fuller picture of the scope of work. Um, but we have some different tools to gather metrics. We have some um, metric workbooks, um, but here's um, some things. If they have any reports, the frequency of the reports, the name of those reports, the audience of that reports, um, and any of those things that were looking for um, and then we just try to gather all that and try to make it sit in a understandable way because sometimes there's so many different areas of reports but nobody really understands what um, information is telling them or they don't know what to do with it once they have it say so okay well that's nice is that good like because some groups have never really developed those target range of this is where you should be. If you begin to move in this direction, then here's some maybe action plans that you could uh, work on with your team um, and some of those. So setting some of those uh, target ranges for where workloads should be and then also any trigger points of if it starts moving in this direction and it gets to here, then we really need to come together and talk about what next step should be or how we can ad address it and be again the whole goal is to be a little more proactive and understand all of the metrics as they're coming in and not waiting until you find out you have a two-year backlog and things like that so um but yeah metrics is always uh interesting for different type of groups that you work with so um we'll go from there but again, I'm moving on here. 
So relationship analysis, this again, once you've gathered a lot of that information, you begin to, with your team, be able to see all of those interconnected activities between what people have said, what the customers have said, what staff and leaders have said, and what the process maps, then you can really begin as the project team, put some of these together and saying, all right, we're seeing the bottlenecks here, here's the wait times, this looks like duplication of work, or they've created 10 Excel sheets, and um, it's just really <laughs> delaying their work and creating a lot of extra work that's not needed. Um, communication issues and really looking at those upstream and downstream impacts so that if you do um, change anything, you understand the impacts of, okay, if we change something in our group, how does that affect uh, where we're sending it or where we're getting it from? And just making sure all of those uh, areas are being covered in whatever new kind of future state that you begin to develop. And so I'll move on here. Um, so this is kind of putting it all together, gathering all of uh, those current states where everything's backed, what's everything's been happening. Um, you work with those teams in those mapping sessions to get your current state and then also develop your future state with hopefully removing any of those waste or incidental steps that aren't really needed. And now you have your um, more streamlined process. And a fun thing to do as well is to build out a list of all the barriers that they've uh, gathered over the time and then look at your future state and check off for them and see, look, has this barrier been addressed? Did we address this one? And uh, so that's really a nice way to validate all of their input to you. And then also that those things have been addressed in the future state uh, process that you're getting ready to implement. And so then you hopefully kind of say, we've addressed everything here with our solutions. And then you kind of report out then of here's everything we discovered, here's our future step, and where we're going to be going with everything. And you get into your implementation and sustainability plans. And it's always good through the course of all the projects to pause and really encourage people and thank them for all of their work throughout the whole time. Um, I think for me as a like a doer, um, that's one of the key things to always remember of stopping and appreciate the work that has been done and where you're at in whatever process you're at and really thank people for where you're at. And I think that's one of the things I often kind of sometimes forget and need to remember to uh, do that to help the team, team uh, know that you do see all the work they did and all, appreciate all the effort that has been going in. And so these are some of the outcomes from all of that work. Um, if you guys have seen SIPOC maps, it's a nice, simple one page document where you can see here's all the inputs coming in. Here's uh, the high level process that's coming out of that. And then here's where it goes, uh, the output to the customer. And so it's uh, just a one page SIPOC map. And we have examples of those if you need any of those. And so that's just a nice way for outsiders or people not too familiar with any group's work for them to get a quick glance and understand, OK, this is kind of their general um, business book of business and work that they're doing. So we get all those maps, the processes, the metrics and the feedback, and we begin to look at um, how to implement this. And with the implementation, Throughout this whole process, you're always considering um, how to be transitioning this over to the team as owners, because you never want to become the owner of a map or work or protocols or the final trainings of these groups. Uh, so you always want to be engaging with their staff and people to develop those tools and resources so that they're the ones that will be able to maintain those long term. And again, that's where you find the value of not over developing things and finding that right level of what is really going to be useful. Like we can create tons of tools and tons of things, but what in the end are you actually going to keep and maintain as a group? And so trying to catch yourself from finding that right balance of helping these tools be informative and helpful, but also what's actually going to be uh, maintained and used long term for the team. So you're not over 
over creating and making waste in your own process. Um, but through that time, keeping in mind all the time through the sustainability of how this work will be handoff, identify those owners throughout this of who would be maintaining this and doing that. And then before you're implementing, really review um, your communication within that team, that feedback loop. And one of the approaches that we really like to use is the 30, 60, 90 day uh, time frame. This again depends on the size of your project. If it's really big or really small, you could really do something in 30 days, maybe if it's a really small, quick changes, or um, if it's really large statewide one, maybe you do this like a six month thing. But the nice, the idea behind the 30, 60, 90 day is that um, you try to keep all of your processes the same for those 30 days and you don't change any of the processes that you're implementing unless you find a critical error or a critical issue within that. Um, so then that way, whatever's being implemented is sustained during that 30 days and people are writing down their feedback, writing down their issues, writing down different ways to improve that process. Uh, because otherwise we've seen groups almost changing their process several times throughout a day, sending an email, sending another email, oh, we're changing this and changing that. And that just makes everyone go back to their default way of how they used to do things in their old times. And so we wanna keep that uh, overwhelming changing from happening and really say, hey, we're, we're going to find issues, we're going to find things we forgot, we're going to find things that came up that we didn't uh, map out during this time, but we want to keep this process stable. And then at the 30 day, we'll go through as a team, make those adjustments and improvements, and then set a new way to move forward over the next 60 days. And you want to have a shared place for all of those processes, so it's not on each people's desktop, so they have an old version or anything. And so that way, whatever updates are made at that 30 day, everyone is still on the same page using that next uh, training tool for this process steps. And so I'm getting a little past my time here, but that's the main thing of really gathering that feedback all the way through, making sure staff feel empowered and uh, that they're heard through it all and um, looking for those processes and ways to improve improve that and then uh, doing a clear and smooth transition to handing off and closing down your piece of the work and so that is not a surprise at the end and say all right bye that that's been a conversation over the whole uh, project time frame and that staff really know hey they can still reach out later on but we really consider you guys the owner and this is your work after this time and we're we're done and thank you for all of that. So again, like thanking them again for all of their efforts and work and uh, just um, letting them know that, hey, they mattered. So I put in here a lot of different links to our uh, CEO uh, offices and links, and you can reach out to me or people on my team for any additional resources or uh, any of those tools for blank charters or blank closing documents or all the lean tools. Uh, try to add some links here, but we have pretty much most people, the last five people or so on our team have probably at least 10 years uh, or more of experience in lean and project management and are all really great people. So feel free to reach out to myself or anyone on our team. So I'll, uh, stop there and uh, thank you again for the opportunity for being here. Thank you, Isaac. Are there questions in the chat? No questions in the chat as of yet, Amy. Okay, um, if anyone has any questions, feel free to raise your hand. All right, looks like Alan. Hi, this is Alan, and uh, be, I'm, I'm, I look at this from a, a very much an organizational perspective, where we have most of the baby boomers are now retired. The first of the generation Xers are now starting to retire, so we are now in a phase as government agencies, not thinking of long-term employment, but 
rapid turnover, almost like how the military turns itself over every two or three years between the retirements and people who are younger just job shopping. And it seems that the uh, that the mapping is critical for something along those lines where people can come in on an emergency basis and take care of someone or if uh, you know a new person comes in then they can start the job and hit the ground running rather than having to go through an extended training period uh, i just wanted to bring that up and see if you have anything you might add to that or tell me if i'm wrong no yeah exactly and i think that's what our team has found a lot of the time sometimes you go into areas and sometimes there's a person that they're the only person who does this area of work and if they ever leave or get sick or are out um then no one else knows how to do that so getting it all documented and building trainings and guides for each of those processes and that's what we usually try to switch the maps into is an actual uh, step-by-step guide or a training so that can be maintained by the group and again the benefit of that is if it only a couple people that were doing it hopefully that can be a onboarding or a training tool as new staff or somebody has to cover for them while they're out for those two weeks that it can still be done and one other thing we always well try to do is move a lot of the information from individual email boxes and sometimes set up group um, email boxes with a certain title for whatever that work is so that that way if one person is ever gone um, there's more people that have access to that email and the work can continue and it's not stuck in an individual's email box so those are some of the things that may come out during a mapping where it gets sent to this person's email box instead of the unit title or unit um, receive um, email box and so those are some of the things but yeah I think with people coming in and going having it written down and being able to use it for training and onboarding is important and that's why too trying to not overbuild the tools but build it at the right level and something that can be sustained and valuable um, to the groups hopefully and that will hopefully last for some time and not be changing too often yeah, thanks for the question. Okay, yeah. are there any others? Okay, well. not seeing any? Not seen any. Initially, there was another one um, in addition to Alan's, but I don't mm -hmm. see any more. Okay. I guess we'll go ahead and start closing the meeting. Uh, we hope that you enjoyed this presentation. Thank you for attending. You can look for a follow up email with links to resources. And we'll also be posting feedback forms, including one you can fill out to nominate yourself for a colleague as a future speaker. And please share with your team members and those who maybe may not be on the PMUG listserv to reach out to chro.training at daf.or.us to be added. Again, if you're interested in joining the Project Management Advisory Board, or learning more about the business analyst processes, visit the OPMAB website. Enjoy the rest of your week, and we'll see you guys again in September. Thank you.